this lecture we will discuss about information communication technology and its application for efficient soil management soil management as you know as you understand that one of the most critical aspect of food production agricultural management and food security per se and soil is again one of the most important natural resources and we in this lecture would see that how information communication technology ICT can be utilized for efficient soil management. Now in the introductory lecture of ICT we have already seen that ICT has different kind of you know beneficial uses in different aspects related to natural resource management. Now we all understand that uh, soil as a natural resource has you know a specific kind of capacity and also function and it provides basically all the nutrients that required for us for any living organisms and the food that we are intaking that food you know get all kind of nutrients and energy basically from soil. So, if soil is not maintained properly then certainly the entire nutrient ecosystem will be disturbed. So, let us see that what are the major functions of soil and then we will see how ICT actually can help in managing those aspects. Now, first sustaining biological activity, diversity and productivity because in soil we have you know million trillion of organisms residing there. Many of them are bacteria, fungus, actinomycetes, etc, etc. This not only actually maintain the ecological diversity, the soil ecological diversity, but also play a very, very important role in food production and productivity. These organisms in the soil also play a very important role in the nutrient cycling. You know that carbon cycling, phosphorus cycle, potassium cycle. So, they play a very, very important role. Next role that soil plays is regulating and partitioning of water and solute flow. Now, we know that when in soil, when there is a plant, you know, uh, so this plant gets all nutrient through its root from the soil. Now, to regulate this water and soil a solute, the solute that is you know here at the uh, soil and near the rhizospheric region, again that also being regulated by soil. Next, soil is a great buffer, perhaps all of you know about this. So, filtering and buffering, then degradation of certain unwanted you know element compounds chemicals, immobilizing some of the bad elements into the soil so that they are not becoming available to plants or organisms, detoxifying organic or inorganic material which are not beneficial for, for you know living organisms including us, industrial and also municipal byproducts and various atmospheric deposition on the soil is also being filtered. So, soil is a great buffer for our ecosystem. Next, storing and cycling of nutrients. As I just mentioned, we have carbon cycle, we have potassium cycle, phosphorus cycle, nitrogen cycle, all these you know nutrient cycling are going on and soil play a major role in running this you know nutrient cycling. Soil also provides support for socio-economic structure. How? Through helping to in, you know maintain productions, production, food production, crop, grain, various kind of plants on which the livelihood of many people are dependent. So, if soil goes wrong, then your entire production system will go wrong and then it will affect your livelihood. So, the entire social dynamic, socio-economic structure might get affected. Now, these are the important aspect of soil. Now, how ICT can help in maintaining 
or managing this important natural resource. We need lot of data and information by now we know that for good management of any resources, good quality of information and data is of primary importance. Now data integration is possible through ICT without visiting the field. We know that when we discussed about remote sensing and GIS technology, right? You need not to go to the field, you can actually do it sitting at your classroom or, or office. So, that also comes under ICT, right? Now, in case of uh, soil management, we already in the remote sensing lecture, we have seen that how remote sensing can help in managing soil and plant, right? And also water. So, through this technology, we can get data from various location without visiting that particular site. Now, set, let us see that what are the uh, some important uses of ICT tool for soil management. Number one, aerial photographs that we talked uh, you know in remote sensing lectures. So, the aerial photograph is very important, satellite imagery that we talked about aerial spectral images if you can recall microwave remote sensing, we discussed about that, GIS, we have also discussed about this aspect, simulation modeling and geostatistics, we talk about simulation modeling aspect as well, neural networks also, you know, these days people are using for uh, natural resource management, including soil, water and all other important resources. So, these are uh, some of the widely used uh, purposes of ICT tool. Now, we will go with few you know aspects of each one of you know these uh, uh, six uh, that uses of ICT tool just to give you a an idea that how actually uh, it is being used. The aerial photographs we already discussed that it is one of the simplest form of report sensing. You take a aerial photograph of an area and then that information goes into the satellite and from satellite it comes into the hub gets interpreted. So, what actually it is done that the cameras for this kind of aerial photography are positioned above the earth surface in balloons or kites to take you know oblique aerial photographs of the landscapes. Okay? So, suppose your camera is somewhere here with aperture and it will take this surface is here, it will take the picture in this way. And, and then it passed to the satellite and goes then finally to the hub. So, these images actually were used to construct topographic or other types of reference maps of natural resources including soil. Soil quality can also be assessed through aerial photography, especially areas without vegetation with high reflectance. We talked about this in remote sensing lecture. So, even shape, irregular shape you know can be identified, it can be examined. So, all these informations uh, are useful for maintaining soil. Repeated photographs with different time interval is very, very useful for monitoring soil quality and its assessment. Because of same location, if different time interval you take you know picture, you can understand that how over a period of time the changes in the soil is taking place. Also, the aerial photography has advantage of allowing a quick and a repeatable look at grass conditions okay, of an area and it also provides permanent records of conditions of a uh, specific area for a specific time. All right? So, though this technique of aerial photography is simple in nature, but it is very handy when you try to assess the soil, the soil quality, the conditions of the soil. So, this is one aerial photographs of salt affected lands in Karnataka. So, as you see that this is the area, salt affected area and here also. So, the color is definitely is important to understand the area. So, this particular you know picture it shows the salt affected lands with high reflectance, right. So, even the crop area sometime will communicate differently through its high reflection if the soils have any problem. Remember that. In case of water logging, salinity, 
low nutrients, these are all soil related problem. This will definitely affect plants by reducing the uptake of nutrient from soil into the plant. And how you can get it through aerial photograph, you will find that light or pale color picture of plant and that will indicate low nutrient uptake status, alright. Second, satellite imagery, we talked about this in remote sensing in great detail, but how for soil it helps. So, satellite imagery high altitude you know satellites, it helps to take picture through sensor and some of these sensors are used to monitor you know the earth's surface for a number of application apart from weather forecasting, land use is one of them. Then soil color will tell you the uh, nutrient condition of that particular area. Recognizing objects from a remotely sensed image is often a very difficult process and it requires skilled manpower to understand that. Many objects you will find it is very, very hard to identify. The reason is that they look in the image you know unfamiliar to our, our old memories or the objects that we actually see through our eyes in the environment. But when we see the same picture of that same area because of its you know capturing angle and other filtering process, these pictures may look little different. So, the interpretation of the picture satellite imagery has to be done by a skilled person. Hence, objects which are remotely sensed are often you know pictures taken from AVOP and the sensors which are used in taking this you know imaging process may be recording electromagnetic signatures that are outside our vision ok. And these electromagnetic signatures are then processed for further interpretation ok. So, to help in object recognitions, the object that in the photograph that satellite imagery that you find to help to recognize and interpret the users often use a methodical process which identifies the features based on shape, image tone, color, pattern, shadow and texture. So, based on these properties a skilled person, a trained person can actually tell you the ground reality ok. Now, this also in remote sensing lecture we discussed, but there I am giving an example of soil. Now, satellite imagery of salt affected line of the same area ok, the area that we just uh, saw here. This is a simple aerial photograph and this is a remote sensing image. See the differences of salt area coming here. So, the reflectance of electromagnetic radiation basically forms the basis for soil quality assessment in case of satellite imagery. Now, satellite imageries we know that they are developed in false color composite right that we discussed in remote sensing lecture. Now, vegetation in case of remote sensing imagery it shows in red color, green vegetation in red color, water bodies shown in black color eroded and soil affected lands are shown in white color. Now, to understand these things one also need to cross check with the ground truth, but an experienced trained person with imagery processing knowledge can actually easily identify these properties. Irregular white patches is also showing the salt affected areas as you see here. Now, this need to be cross checked also validated from with the ground truthing because sometime you may mix up with some other uh, aspect or other object. Microwave remote sensing, we discussed that in the remote sensing lecture, but how in soil management it helps. So, microwave portion of the spectrum covers you know 1 centimeter to 1 meter in wavelength and because of their long wavelength compared to a visible and infrared microwaves have special properties that are important for remote sensing. The reason is that they can penetrate through cloud cover, haze, dust and that is how they allow to detect the conditions of weather environmental condition throughout the day. 
Now, microwave remote sensing are generally of two types. One is passive microwave sensing and another is active microwave sensing. So, these things we have discussed already in remote sensing. Now, coming to the soil management aspect using microwave remote sensing, this is often used for estimating soil moisture and we all know that soil moisture is a very important component of the hydrological cycle and it contributes significantly to the water and energy flux from the surface of the earth and which in turn you know affect the entire atmospheric circulation and thus the climate of a region of a country. Okay. So, that is how that soil moisture is critical microwave remote sensing help us to, to assess the soil moisture condition. There are some microwave sensors which are of you know non-imaging type and what they do? They take the measurements in one linear dimension as opposed to the two dimensional representation of imaging sensor. Now, we have another type of equipment radar altimeters. Now, these radar altimeters they transmit short microwave pulses and measure the round trip time delay to target to determine their distance from the sensor. Okay. So, radar altimeters help us to understand the distance between the sensor and the target object on the ground because the satellite is moving no, continuously. So, at what time and how far is that particular satellite from the object that radar altimeter can help you to, to measure. Now, then we have uh, scatterometers which are uh, generally non-imaging sensors and are used to make precise quantitative measurements of the amount of energy that is back scattered from the targets. So, you have here satellite and this is your earth surface it comes here then it also goes back this back scattered uh, imagery the or the signal back scatter signals that coming from the surface is actually measured by scatterometers. The amount of energy that back scattered is also dependent on the surface property of the earth okay? and also the angle at which the microwave energy strike. Suppose from here it is striking after some time if it is from here then it will be more the angle will be less. So, as it move here so angle will be much higher. So, depending upon that angle of inclination also uh, there can be change in the back scattered energy. So, scatterometers helps also measuring that all right. So, remote sensing uh, data are generally interpreted to obtain information about crop areas, water bodies and all these things as mentioned here. Based on you know these information thematic maps are prepared which we discussed in the remote sensing lecture if you recall. And in terms of soil quality assessment nature or reflectance are normally what we do is that suppose in case of degraded lands such as you know salt affected or erodible lands they show high reflectance and you get to see white patches as you saw in the remote sensing picture here right. So, in this case what happen is that uh, you know degraded lands they show high reflectance normal soil shows dark in color with less reflectance. Similarly, moisture or waterlogged soil will also appear in dark color. So, from these color differences uh, one can identify the problem. So, assessment of soil quality for any area will be in general done with the pretext of productivity decline means ultimately it is linked with the agricultural or crop productivity. The area of assessment is demarcated and soil samples are collected from different sites wherever you have gone or you have marked your experimental site or your target area. Soil samples will be collected from the study area analyzed for different physical, chemical and biological indicators. Now, those informations you can actually put also when you prepare a GIS map. So, you can also 
with the help of remote sensing and GIS, you can actually bring in much more information in the final outcome in the form of different map using different thematic layers. So, information technology or ICT often use these analytical data that uh, just mentioned here and uh, these data are then incorporated in database and then used for different purposes for managing soil. So, again microwave remote sensing it helps you know collecting various data informations in informations coming from uh, the microwave imagery, analysis of soil samples uh, from the field. This also gives an idea of the you know real status of the soil and then it is different aspect of the soil also comes to you. Once those things are there soil physical, biological and chemical properties then you actually incorporate all those properties along with the imagery that you have already captured. And these quality parameters you know are often used uh, by these ICT tools to assess the soil quality for efficient management. And that is why you know ICT and physicochemical biological parameters can go together hand in hand for efficient soil quality management. And to get an overall idea you know about a particular location. So, together remote sensing, microwave remote sensing and the field level sample collection analysis of various property can be very, very useful for efficient soil management. Next come GIS again in remote sensing GIS we talked in great detail about that. So, straight away I would like to go that what are the different uses uh, for soil management through GIS. We know that GIS help us presenting representing various information through various thematic layers. So, you see that uh, this is a map uh, showing soil salinity and uh, again you know this provide GIS provides us comprehensive knowledge about the soil quality and the different indicators that are used and basically it helps policy makers and the experts to understand that where how much uh, soil problems are existing. So, that is how it helps in uh, maintaining or managing soil. Simulation models and geostatistics models we have discussed in great detail in previous lecture. Geostatistics also you know often uh, these days used within even GIS uh, platform. Yeah, basically computer simulation, computer modeling uh, we use to understand various kind of phenomena, physical phenomena chemical phenomena in the soil and often we also use different kind of mathematical modeling to understand varial functions phenomena happening in the soil. Simulation also can be used to explore and gain new you know insight into a new technology and to estimate the performance of a very complex system. In case of uh, uh, soil management uh, uh, what happened that there are many unknown properties of values of soil quality parameters which actually sometimes are estimated with standard or known values. So, you have uh, some standard of a particular property standard value and then you estimate your own sample. Now, interpolation technique is also uh, used uh, some time to get the values in all the unmeasured areas and for that we use uh, a technique called Krieging. This I also have discussed in the uh, remote sensing GIS lecture. So, I will not repeat it here, but Krieging is most appropriate remember when, when you know that there is a specially correlated distance or directional bias in the data. So, that time actually Krieging can actually help you to understand the area uh, much better. Neural networks, well these days there are different kind of uses of neural network an artificial neural network it is a system on the operation of biological neural networks. In other words uh, you can say that it is an emulation of biological neural system and it works in almost in a similar pattern. So, it is built basically with a, a systematic step by step procedure to optimize a performance criteria or to follow some some internal constraint you know which is commonly we refer to as learning rule all right. 
So, in this case the input output training data are, are very much fundamental for neural network uh, technology because these uh, you know data convey the necessary information to discover the optimal operating point because if you you know are going to use neural network for soil maintenance soil management you need to know you know the optimal operating point because that will actually help you to carry out a meaningful exercise now neural network there are three types of you know eco environmental attributes that are physically based and easily quantifiable at a grid level using ann and these are remote sensing derived attributes which we earlier talked about vegetation index, wetness index, soil brightness index, surface land temperature index, then meteorological attributes, annual temperature, annual precipitation and then we have terrain attribute means the elevation, the height. So, these uh, informations uh, also helps uh, we call it eco environment background values. So, these helps actually your neural network to work in much more meaningful manner. So, with this actually we end uh, this uh, particular uh, topic of utilizing a various kind of ICT you know uses and in maintaining the soil in a uh, effective manner. So, 6 different widely used uh, ICT tools that we have discussed in this lecture and individually we have seen that how they are they could be used for better management of soil as a natural resource. Mm -hmm.